I'm Sarah Patterson, and this is the May Recap. It's time to let your voice be heard. The Federal Employee Viewpoint Survey opened May 15th and will remain open until June 30th. The FEVS serves as a tool for employees to share their thoughts in many critical areas, including their work experiences, their agency, and their leadership. It is an important tool for Army Systemic Command leadership to utilize to better understand how the organization is doing as it relates to employee engagement and overall employee satisfaction in the workplace. This year, in order to encourage survey participation, the Army has enacted a competition. Christine Wormuth, Secretary of the Army, has more. The more employees who take the survey, the more we can affect change. Thank you to all the Army civilians who take the FEVs each year, and I'm confident we can make this year's participation rate one of the highest. This year, the component reporting the highest participation rate will be visited by an Army senior leader. It'll be a surprise, but I promise it'll be great. Make your voice heard. Take the FEVs today. On May 20th, the Army Systemic Command Reserve Element held a change of command ceremony to welcome their new commander, Colonel Roderick Page, and say farewell to their outgoing commander, Colonel Bradley Miller. The ceremony took place outside of Rock Island Arsenal's Quarters 1, near the banks of the Mississippi River. The Reserve Element Unit integrates with ASC's Army Field Support Brigades to conduct operational staff support in the areas of intelligence, readiness analysis, current and future operations, and integrated logistics support. ASC is leading the mission of distributing equipment to Ukraine. Captain Matthew Stein, an operational needs statement team lead, has had the opportunity to contribute to this mission. He describes this work as some of the most rewarding work he's done in his entire Army career. Keep watching to hear more about Captain Stein's ASC story. So one of the cool things I got to do here at ASC was uh, I got to first go to Germany to help uh, deal with the release of APS for helping Defender Europe as well as helping the Ukrainians. And then when they stood up the telecommunication distribution Ukraine in Poland, now RDCU, remote distribution Ukraine, I got to actually be there and see history happening right in front of my eyes. And they are doing an incredible job over there, and it is an amazing experience. And I truly, truly enjoyed being over there in Poland. It was probably the most rewarding thing I've did in my entire Army career. The U.S. Army Materiel Command Logistics Assistance Representatives assigned to the 405th Army Field Support Brigade in Europe have been extremely busy over the past 15 months supporting U.S. and NATO operations in direct assistance to Ukraine. Will Owens, a 405th AFSB LAR who primarily supports the Army Preposition Stocks 2 program and the 5th Battalion 4th Air Defense Artillery Regiment, was recently selected as the U.S. Army Aviation and Missile Command 2022 LAR of the Year. With over 40 years of experience working on missile systems, Owens' primary mission is to advise the commanders and units he supports. Owens is qualified on the Hawk Surface-to-Air Missile System, Avenger Missile System, the Man Portable Javelin, Centennial Radar System, Shadow, Puma, Raven, and now the Mobile Short Range and Air Defense. Owens is a top-tier expert in his field and certainly deserving of this huge honor. Congratulations, Will Owens. Our final story takes us to Japan with the 403rd Army Field Support Brigade, where they recently conducted a senior leader seminar focusing on operational mission priorities and strategic sustainment in Northeast Asia. According to Colonel Lisa Renard, 403rd AFSB commander, the event took place for five primary reasons. These reasons were professional development and personal growth, deep diving into topics that will benefit organizations, networking, building and strengthening partnerships with local nationals, and to gain a better appreciation and shared understanding into the brigade's operations in Japan and the U.S. Indo-Pacific Command region as a whole. The event included performances by the Teikou Drum Team, multiple guest speakers, a team building volleyball match, discussions on resiliency, trust, and brigade accomplishments, and much more. And that's all we have for the May Recap. We'll see you next month.